Hi guys, my name is Catherine and welcome to this week's video. Um, let me just start off this video by saying I'm so sorry that this series has taken a lot longer than expected. Um, pretty much I was on vacation, things got hectic, but now we're coming back and organizing our schedules so everything will be a lot better from here on out. So today we're going to continue with our series in Maya, and this is still the basics. Um, if you haven't seen the videos from before and don't know anything about Maya, I highly recommend watching them. If you know the basics of Maya, you might not need to watch this, but if you're a beginner, it still might be a good refresher. Okay, I'm going to file, set my project, and my project is on my documents in Maya, projects. Uh, I'm not sure if it was test project or test 01. So let's try test 01. Set file, open scene. We just have one scene, so open that. And we don't need to save. Okay, so all we have right now is this square. And what we're gonna do basically is, as we said before, if we hold down our right mouse button, we have different options. So right now we're in object mode and there's face, vertex, edge, and the rest we're not gonna worry about. If you click on face, you can see, you can select, you know, any face there is. So if we select this face, all we have to do is click it. You can see now it's a little orange so that we know that that's selected. If we hold down shift, hold down right mouse, we can say extrude face. Now all this means is that we're gonna pull it out and make it longer. So we can pull it out this way and make it longer, and then we can put an angle to it. We can, you know, push it over here. And that is the extrude tool. All you do is move things out and around. Um, now you wanna make sure the extrude tool can be a little weird sometimes. So you, this is the last used tool. It's right now the you know extrude. So you wanna make sure you hit Q or you click this little mouse button once you're done extruding because you don't want things to get weird. At this point, if you just click off in space anywhere, you won't have any faces selected. So there's another tool that I haven't shown you yet. If you hit three on your keyboard, your object will smooth out completely. Now to get back to regular, hit one. Now this is a problem because in some cases you're gonna have to be in three mode to turn in your final project, depending on what your model's being used for. Make sure you're in object mode so it's green, and then hold down shift, hold down right mouse, and insert edge loop tool. If you go to the square, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Wherever you want it to be, so say you want it to be up with this edge, you hold down right here and drag while you're holding down. The default edge loop creates a line, and as you can see, it goes around the entire object. Now what this does, I'll show you in a second, we'll put this one pretty far out, we'll put this one really close, and this one really close also. Now I'm going to go back to my selection tool, hit 3, and it smooths out. Now, as you can see, this edge is sharper than this edge. That's because this edge loop was closer than this one. As you can see, at this point, we get a shape that is partially smooth, partially not. Now, this is also important um, because a lot of things in real life, even though they have sharp edges, they're not perfectly 100% sharp because that would be something that, you know, cuts your hand right when you touch it, it's that sharp. So a lot of times, modelers, they'll give it a little bit of an edge loop just so it'll be a little more realistic. Going back, just to show you those other edge loop tools, I'm gonna click off, go to object mode, hold down shift, hold down right click. We'll go to the options, insert edge loop, and now we can say multiple edge loops and two. Now what this does, if I click anywhere right here, I get even edge loops. Now, go back to my selection tool. This is cool because if we say face, we can click this face and then hold down shift, hold down right click, extrude face. Now as you can see we're getting more fun shapes than just squares and circles. Okay, so remember, go back to your selection tool. Um, we can just select the whole object and backspace delete. Now what I want to do now is create a little bit of a project. So what we're going to do is start with a cylinder. So click cylinder, we have a cylinder. 
Um, remember, if we go down to polycylinder, we can subtract the amount of axes we have. Nine is a good start for us. Now at this point, we can say select face, drag over all these faces. Make sure you don't have any other selected. So as I can see, this one's selected. So I just hold down control and see we get a minus. So I click on it and now it's not selected. Oh, and these are selected too. So hold down control, click, 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 and they're not selected. So now another, uh, a quicker way to extrude, which they added in recently, Maya, is if you go to your move tool and hold down shift, then you can extrude from there. It's not the exact same move tool because you can't move things diagonally, but it's very helpful. Anyway, we can also shape it like so. And what I'm doing right now is I'm scaling. And then move it up. Actually, I'm going to extrude it up so you can tell there's a little difference. Now what I'm going to do is insert an edge loop. Oh, we have to change our edge loop because remember we're on a weird setting. So let's go back. I'm not in object mode. Options for into your edge loop. I'm just going to reset so it's regular. I'm going to put an edge loop. Okay, for some reason my edge loop isn't working. I'm not sure if my geometry is off or what I did, but this is another chance to show you another tool. So if we control right click, multi-cut, Multicut will give you the option to cut around an object. So it's kind of like creating your own custom edge loop. So we can start right here. And if I hold down shift, I can get these percentages so I know exactly where it's going to be. So like right here. Or if I don't care, I can just start right here, click, hold down, and drag to wherever I want. So as you can see, I could be more perfect with how this line is going to end up, but I don't really care right now. And then I closed it right there. Now, go back to your selection, and now we can hold faces, select all these faces, make sure you don't have anything else selected, and I do, of course, hold down control and click them, hold down control and click. Okay, so now I have this weird cutout shape, and I'm just going to push it down. See, this is just the difference between pushing down and extruding down, holding down shift and doing that. Um, now I'm going to go around and select... Oh, I didn't make this even. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. This doesn't have to be perfect. I haven't used mine in a long time, if you can't tell. Okay, new plan. I'm gonna insert an edge loop right here. And then I'm gonna take these faces. No, I'm still on the edge loop. I'm gonna take these faces and delete them. So now you can see I have a hole in my little tower. So we're gonna fix that. So if we go to our edges, select, select, and I'm doing that by holding down shift, holding down shift and selecting that one, hold down shift, right click, and we can, I think it's bridge. So now we just click this one, make sure the other ones aren't selected, shift, click, hold down shift, hold down right click, and go to bridge. And over here, hold down shift, click, Hold down shift, click. Oh, my other ones are selected, see? So you have to click off and then click this one and then shift, click this one. And then hold down shift, right click, bridge. So I probably did that a really confusing way. Um, then what we can do is take this whole object, so go to object mode, kind of zoom out, and move it. So I can move it over here, move it over here. If I hit Control D, it duplicates. So now I can select this face. 
then I'll hold down shift, extrude it to about here, and then take this face, hold down extrude, put to about here, and we're making a little castle. Now I'm just going to put in uh, new cubes for the other walls because I don't really feel like merging them. And since this isn't really going to be anywhere, I don't really have to worry about shapes overlapping or anything. So let's take the face of it and pull it up so it's a little taller. Click off, select that, shift select that. Hold down extrude, put it over there. Uh, that might bother some people. It doesn't bother me that there's a line right there. Again, depending on where this is going, what you're doing with it, that's where you're gonna have to be a little more worried about stuff like that, but we're just learning right now. And then we can either scale it or we can take these faces and pull them in. And then we'll take this object, control D, and just move it over here. Now I'm gonna take all these objects and move them up, just so they're kinda on the grid. Now I'm gonna take a plane, so there's my plane, scale it, nice and big. Okay, so if we take the edges, double click, on one and it will go all the way around and then we can move it down so he's like on a hill. I'm gonna scale it. I'm gonna take these edges and push him down a little so it's a little softer. That looks kind of weird but we're just learning for fun. Now this is too short. So let's take the face here, push it up. Now as you can see, I'm affecting this over here. Again, for what we're doing, doesn't super matter, but, but just be aware that that's not super ideal. <laughs> and also that's not super even, but we're just having fun. Um, now, since I want to make a little door, let's put a cube in there, push it forward, move it over, scale it to fit, I can just scale it this way, scale, and we will take this face, just move it up. And now I'm going to put in some edge loops. So object mode, shift right click. Uh, let me just make sure this is reset. Yep. So let's put one right here, one right here, one right there. So now we can take these verts. Make sure you have all the top ones selected except for the middle. Push it down. Select these two, shift, hold, select those two, and now we have a little door. Now if we were to put more edges in there, you could see we can make it really curved, but not super necessary for just this. Another cool thing we can do, since uh, you can't see this door, we can assign a favorite material, and we can assign a Lambert is what's on right now so we can change the color of it but it would still be like that a fong is a little shiny so let's do a fong um now if we go over here fong one color let's do a dark gray and now we can see our door better object mode insert edge loop we'll just make it a little moat all the way around Is that in the... No, there's a line right there. Well, maybe I'll do another line right here. And then it'll go... No. We'll do 
a line right here and then the line right here and that'll be the mount. Okay, now we'll take the faces. Shift click. Okay. And then we will move shift extrude down. Yeah, that's a cuter little moat. And then if we want to keep these selected, we can go assign favorite material, a fong, and we can make it blue. If we select these objects, we can also give them a little bit of color, assign favorite material. We can do a Lambert with this one. Whenever you're changing colors and you're using Lamberts, just make sure you never choose Lambert 1 because Lambert 1 is your default, this gray color, and if you mess that up, then Maya gets really confused. I don't know why. Okay, and let's do object mode. I guess we'll do faces. We'll select all the faces and then deselect these. I'm holding down shift or you can also hold down control. Hold down right click, go down to assign favorite material. Let's do a regular Lambert again. So now we're on Lambert 3, color, green, green. Oh, that is a little bright. So if you think your color's too bright, if you select the object and you scroll down in this little taskbar, this is basically all your history, so we're gonna go over deleting that in a second. But this is our Lambert 3, it was the, the green, so we can go here and turn down that so it's not as bright. Oh, now that looks super weird. So we'll turn it off a bit. Yeah, that looks better. So now with deleting history, all you have to do is edit, delete by type, and history. You want to make sure you delete your history often because Maya gets confused if it has a lot of history. It gets buggy and it gets weird. So make sure you delete your history all the time. And make sure you're also saving all the time. So file, save scene as, and we can call this one castle setup. And also make sure you're saving in the right place. So I'm saving in my test 01 scenes, which is the right place. Save as, and we're good. So one more thing we're just gonna go over just because if you double click an edge, you can delete it. So you go shift, right click, delete edge but things will be affected. So as you can see, this side's a little different than this side because I deleted that edge. Same goes with deleting verts. If you're gonna delete a vertice, make sure you know what you're doing because things get weird like this. And this is the situation that we don't want because there are so many more than four verts on this face. Like this is one face and we should be sticking to four verts to make like quads, as we said before. So don't do this, that'll mess up your geometry. Um, see this one, it looks like a weird triangle, but if you look at verts, you can see that there are one, two, three, four on it. So yeah, that's all for this video. If anything was too confusing, please leave me a comment below, ask questions. Um, I can make shorter videos if you have a question that I didn't explain well enough, like if you want to go over edge loops again, if you want to go over um, adding materials like the Lamberts and things, um, if you want to go over extruding again, just I can make simple videos just based off of those topics, so just leave a comment below if you're confused in any way, please let me know. Thanks for watching, bye guys!